Two years ago, the International Institute for Sustainable Development hosted the Lake Winnipeg Basin Summit in Winnipeg, Manitoba. The event brought together 150 stakeholders to talk about solutions for Lake Winnipeg, the 10th largest freshwater lake in the world and one of the most nutrient stressed. A key point that came out of the summit was that the problem of phosphorus loading to Lake Winnipeg could be flipped on its head and viewed as an opportunity, one for innovation and for economic development. It's fundamentally illogical to be dumping thousands of tons of this scarce and precious strategic resource into the bottom of Lake Winnipeg when we can be capturing, recycling and transforming this into high value biomaterials. Phosphorus is critical to agriculture and to global food security. As the steward of Lake Winnipeg and the recipient of nutrients from three other provinces and four states, Manitoba sits on a remarkable sustainable development opportunity, one that could be good for the economy, the environment, and for all Manitobans. What's needed is the vision, innovation, and entrepreneurship to take advantage of this opportunity. After the summit, IISD took ownership of making into reality the idea of a bioeconomy. An economy in which the basic building blocks for industry and the raw materials for energy come from plant-based renewable resources. Two years on, IISD has made significant progress with its partners in exploring how the bioeconomy can be developed in Manitoba. In the fall of 2012, IISD proved that large-scale harvesting can be done of the extremely common, fast-growing, and underappreciated wetland plant, the cattail. In total, IISD harvested 850 cattail bales, yes, cattails can be baled just like other crops, at Netley Lebo Marsh at the south end of Lake Winnipeg, in ditches along the Trans-Canada Highway, and at Pelly's Lake in the LaSalle Red Boyne Conservation District. The resulting bales removed roughly 900 kilograms of phosphorus, equivalent to the amount of phosphorus in 3,300 bags of lawn starting fertilizer. So this is a prime example of large scale. We have like over 200 acres of cattail here, which is actively sucking up phosphorus and all the other stuff. So for, uh, from a commercial scale, it's easy to get in here and uh, collect a bunch of material in a very short period of time. The harvesting also offset roughly 630 tons of carbon, equivalent to the average annual greenhouse gas emissions from about 120 cars. We're taking the nutrients out of a natural place where they collect yeah. in, a, in a lake bottom like this, in, a, in a, a lake bottom that's only you know wet some of the time and collects those nutrients and uh, you know we can we can take those nutrients out of the system, and I guess it just it is really a classic example of uh, of how easy this can be uh, yeah. to to solve a downstream environmental issue and create upstream benefits. The cattail bales will be transported to several sites in southern Manitoba, including a pilot project near Gross Isle. This pilot is being carried out in collaboration with Manitoba Hydro and shows how ecological biomass, like cattails, can be turned into a coal substitute called biochar, helping Manitoba meet its goal to phase out the use of coal. What makes cattail harvesting an even more appealing solution is the many co-benefits it provides in addition to capturing phosphorus. These other benefits include bioenergy production when the cattail is burned for heat, the production of carbon credits, the potential use of cattail ashes as fertilizer and habitat improvement. If you are harvesting the cattail only for its bioenergy purposes, yeah, sure, it might be it might be worth something, or only for its nutrient value. But you're combining in a site like this with Pelly's Lake, you're combining the flood storage. That's one of their main reasons for doing it was to for uh, reducing flood impacts downstream. And then you're getting that benefit of holding back all the nutrients in the floodwaters. And then you're getting the benefit of the cattail absorbing it recovering that uh, biomass to get the phosphorus, to get the, the energy content from the cattail. So the whole pile of benefits that you're piecing together. And let's not forget the carbon offsets. If you take this biomass and you use it to displace uh, coal, say, mm -hmm. uh, which there is still a lot of coal use in, uh, in, uh, on farms in Manitoba, 
we're displacing the carbon emissions from that coal. The harvest in 2012 stems from six years of research into cattail harvesting by IISD and its partners at Netli Lebo Marsh, a large wetland at the mouth of Lake Winnipeg. This ongoing project demonstrates how phosphorus can be captured, removed, and recycled by sustainably harvesting cattails and using this common wetland plant as a fuel source for bioenergy. This research has been recognized internationally as cutting-edge sustainable development work. In June 2012, the project was acknowledged as part of the Sustainia 100, one of the top 100 sustainable development solutions in the world, at the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development, Rio Plus 20. The project also received a Manitoba Excellence in Sustainability Award for Innovation and Research for Sustainability. So what's in the future for IISD's work on Lake Winnipeg? This is the beginning. This is the beginning, proving that we can cost-effectively save Lake Winnipeg. The next step is to produce, is to, is to demonstrate that those feedstocks that we're using to save Lake Winnipeg are actually a tremendously valuable input to the Manitoba economy. And now we have to invest in the R&D to, to add value to those feedstocks. And that's science and engineering and genomics research so that we can add value to these feedstocks. And we think the future is, is, is very bright given the, uh, the, the size, the magnitude of the economic payoff, which will be measured in billions, if not tens of billions of dollars. The harvesting of cattails is part of IISD's Lake Winnipeg Bioeconomy Project, a broader initiative to identify the nutrient and water management solutions that can help Manitoba reach its goal of a 50% nutrient reduction to Lake Winnipeg. Landscape management and clean tech solutions can also have major social and economic development benefits. In addition, Manitoba's interim report for its surface water management strategy includes principles closely aligned with the bioeconomy approach, including the use of small, distributed water storage and phosphorus recycling. With the historic flood in Manitoba in 2011 and the threat of a drought in 2012, it is becoming clear that innovations in watershed management are worth investing in. By developing value-added approaches related to the bioeconomy, such investments can pay for themselves many times over and help ensure a healthy and sustainable Lake Winnipeg Basin for generations to come. <laughs>